Okay, so now we will uh, understand how this PFK1 and PFK2 are regulated and how it is participating in uh, glycolysis, regulation of glycolysis. So first we will see the phosphofructokinase 2 enzyme, PFK2 enzyme. So as I said, the PFK2 it is a bifunctional enzyme. So bifunctional enzyme means one enzyme having two function uh, functions here. So the one of the function of this PFK2 is it has got kinase parts, kinase part of it, and it has got uh, phosphatase part of it, phosphatase here. So the function of kinase is it will add phosphate as you already know, and function of phosphatase is. It is opposite to that of kinase. It will remove the phosphate from wherever phosphates are present. Okay. So now this kinase or phosphatase, either one of them will be active at a time. So both of them cannot be active at a time because there are antagonistic functions there. So depending on in which condition our body our body cells are there, whether it is a fasting condition or whether they are in well-fed condition. So first I will uh, take example of uh, fasting condition rather than well fed condition. So in fasting condition what happens? So here is the fasting condition. Fasting condition as you already know, uh, there will be decrease in blood glucose concentration because we are fasting, so our body is in fasting condition. So because there is a low blood glucose, so glucagon will be released at that time. So there will be release of glucagon from uh, beta cells of pancreas. So this glucagon is a water soluble hormone. So it will increase uh, cyclic EMP formation. So by G protein coupled reaction, so G protein it will go and bind to uh, receptor, G protein coupled receptor, and adenylyl cyclase will be activated, and that will increase cyclic EMP. So cyclic EMP will activate uh, protein kinase A. So there will be increase in protein kinase A, and this protein kinase A, as it as the name says, it's a kinase. So it will add, it will go and add phosphate to this phosphatase. So to the hydroxyl residues, hydroxyl containing amino acid like serine, ty ty uh, tyrosine and threonine, one of these amino acids will be added with phosphate. So it will add phosphate to phosphatase and it will add phosphate to kinase also. So there will be addition of phosphate to both kinase and the phosphatases. Now we will have to understand whether kinase or phosphatase, if it is act, whether it is active in phos when phosphate is added or it is inactive, or whether kinase is active in pho when phosphate is added or inactive. So now the kinase, when phosphate is added to the any of these hydroxyl containing amino acids, it is becoming inactive. The kinase part of the enzyme PFK2, it will be inactive when phosphate is added. So on the other side. The phosphatase, when phosphate is added, it becomes active. So, kinase of PFK2 kinase, it is inactive in phosphorylated state, and phosphatase part of PFK2 is active under phosphorylated condition. So, now glucagon in fasting condition, it phosphorylates both kinase and phosphatase. So, since phosphatase is active in phosphate is added, so kinase is inactive. So, what's the function of phosphatase? So phosphatase, it will go and uh, remove phosphate from the second position in this fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, as you know, it is the positive allosteric modulator on PFK1. So PFK1 here, so which is the rate limiting enzyme for glycolysis, so which converts fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This is the rate limiting enzyme for glycolysis. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is a, it's a positive modulator on PFK1. Okay. So in fasting condition what happens? Phosphatase becomes active. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is converting into fructose 6-phosphate. So what happens? the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate will slowly decrease. So it will decrease in the presence of glucagon. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate concentration will come down. So it is just increase, making it as fructose 6-phosphate. So in the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate decreases, so its positive effect on this PFK1, it will be decreased. Because you are decreasing, the cell is decreasing this fructose 2,6-bisphosphate concentration. So glucagon, 
by making this phosphatase, keeping this phosphatase in phosphorylated state, it is converting more and more fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate into fructose 6 phosphate. So, it's fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate's positive influence on PFK1 is taken off now. So, when its positive influence is taken off, so PFK1 becomes, it will decrease its function. So, fructose 6 phosphate conversion into fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, it will decrease. So, there will be accumulation of fructose 6 phosphate. So, when fructose 6 phosphate accumulates, so it will decrease the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate because it will affect that reaction. So, glucose 6 phosphate will accumulate. So, accumulated glucose 6 phosphate, it will affect the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate because it will feedback inhibit exokinase here. So, that reaction will be inhibited. So, overall, there will be decrease in the conversion of glucose going towards pyruvate okay so glucose will concentration will try to increase that's what glucagon is doing so glucagon by doing all this it is trying to increase the blood glucose concentration that's why glucagon is an hyperglycemic hormone so okay now we'll uh, move into fed state so that's what we are we are seeing in fasting condition in fed state what happens so when a person takes meal or a diet so there will be increase in blood glucose concentration. So because of the increase in blood glucose concentration, so glucose will enter into beta cells of pancreas and releases insulin. So that we have already seen how insulin is released from beta cells of pancreas. So this insulin by tyrosine kinase catalyzed the signal cascading process. So it will activate phosphatases. So, phos so phosphatases will be activated. There will be phosphorylation of certain proteins and some of, so those proteins include protein phosphatases. So protein phosphatases are getting phosphorylated in the presence of insulin. So phosphorylated form of these protein phosphatases are active enzymes now. So what is the job of these phosphatases? As the name says, it's a phosphatase, it's going to go, it will go and remove all the phosphates. So what this does, this protein phosphatase will come and remove this phosphate, it will remove phosphate from kinase. So now the hydroxyl containing amino acids, it has got only OH and also it will come and remove phosphatase from, sorry, phosphate from these phosphatases. Now these phosphatases have got only OH. So when kinase, it loses the phosphate, so it is in dephosphorylated state, so it becomes active. Now kinase becomes active. Now phosphatase, now it has lost its phosphate so it becomes inactive. So active will become inactive now in the presence of insulin. So now what happens? Kinase parts become active, phosphatase part is becoming inactive. So since PFK2 kinase is active, so what's the job of kinase? So it will convert fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6, sorry, 2,6 bisphosphate. So in the presence of PFK2 kinase active, that is in the presence of insulin, more and more fructose 2, 6 bisphosphates phosphates are increased. So, these increased fructose 2, 6 bisphosphates, they will go and activate PFK1. So, PFK1 is, again, now it is getting activated because it has got more concentration of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphates. So, when PFK1 is getting activated, so more and more fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate and they will go down to form pyruvate. Okay? So this is how insulin will activate glycolysis via activating this PFK2 kinase part of it whereas glucagon will inhibit glycolysis via activating PFK2 phosphatase part of it. So that's how, this is how the PFK1 and PFK2 are regulated with the help of glucagon, insulin and the center, in the center point of it is, is the fructose 2,6 bisphosphate.